Well, welcome to the Chase Merrill podcast. I am your host, Chase Merrill. And today I have my uh, friend, my one of my mentors, one of my favorite human beings on the planet Earth, Tim Wimberly with me today. Welcome, Pastor Tim. Hey, hey. Great to be with you, man. Great to have you. This has been another one of those long time uh, kind of coming, looking forward to since we started the podcast. And, uh, and man, I, I have been chomping at the bit and just over overflowing with excitement just to connect and have time today. So thanks for yeah making yeah. the time, the space, because I know you're in a different time zone right now. You're in a different part of yeah. the world. And, uh, yeah, and, man. and so what, what I'll do is, you know, just kind of set the context for, you know, the, the conversation today and let you have a moment really to kind of introduce yourself in a second. Sure. But yeah, this podcast is the, the why behind it is really to really help people get freed up from what's holding them back so they can get built up into who uh, they were made to be. You know, what freed up Amen. to freed up to built up is where we're trying to help people go. And uh, and and then we we're doing something called the 52 Project in 52 conversations over 52 weeks with 52 <laughs> people who have made an impact in my life and are still making an impact in the world around them. And you are on that list. And uh, and Super. so. It's an honor to have you today. Will you, will you do me a favor? Just kind of give a brief, like nutshell of of who Tim Wimberly is and who he's connected to you when it comes to like family, et cetera. Um, and then where you are in the in the world in in, in the season. So quick, quick yep. snapshot. Yeah. So uh Tim Wimberly married to an amazing, beautiful, gorgeous lady named Dana. Uh, we've been married, um, August will be 37 years, um, oh, wow. five beautiful boys, five incredible daughter-in-laws. We have eight grandchildren and, uh, the potential of more is right around the corner. And <laughs> yeah, so let's go, let's go. Uh, we're, we're excited. Um, we, uh, uh, we've been doing ministry, uh, for, um, 38 years, August 1st, 1985, I gave my heart to Jesus and I never turned back. And so uh, I met Dana two weeks after I got saved and really the rest is history. We we became pastors about three years later and uh, have been in ministry vocationally full-time since that time. Uh, we are presently serving as Foursquare, uh, uh, Foursquare Missions workers in Cluj, Romania, uh, we um, and we do a lot of different things, and we can talk about that more uh, yeah. in the in the podcast. And also, we have information for people to get more of a snapshot of who we are. But yeah, but we uh, we love uh, family, and we love um, seeing people uh, come to Jesus and see their lives transformed, and then you know really uh, make a difference in the world that they live in. So yeah. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been doing that a lot long time, and we, there are people all over the world uh, simply because we showed up, right? That's that's, that's right. It, man. That's, that's right. That's it. We just got to show up. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, ha yeah. I had I had when people found I had a few people find out that you know we were gonna have uh, an episode. Well, actually, really, what it came down to was before um I, I they knew officially you were going to come on uh, and be a part of the an episode you had people reaching out saying are you going to have tim wimberly on are you going to be able to have a, a conversation with him you know and i was like whoa this is my this is first of all it's my podcast like i get to you know <laughs> but but what i uh what i was uh you know just pe people are when it comes to people that have had an encounter with you um i was thinking about this this morning and, and kind of just prepping for this time uh, a little bit here and, and really even praying for our conversation today and it's occurred to me that that I don't know if I've met a person that has that knows you that doesn't have a moment or a or a um a, a moment significant there's or a memory that's like sealed in their mind and their heart that you that that mm. is connected to you and it could be like it could be small it, or it could be like you've known them for years and it's been investment I, but like there's not like a nominal Tim Wimberly knower if you if you if you've known him you've been impacted by him. Mm. And like, I just like, you know, I, th I think about the way uh, that that continues to echo across uh, your your life in, in, in your and Dana's life and marriage and family and obviously legacies. You continue to uh, pour into things beyond bigger than yourself. I just I was, I was like, that's so cool. I don't know if I really have met another person in my life that I could say that about where 
Mm. Uh, that's that that's been a reality and um and and that's been that's been part of my story with with you you know part of the way we're connected mm. and why you're here today on this conversation with me is you've been a huge part of my journey you made a huge impact on my life um and you've continued to do that you've continued to show up as you do for so many people um and uh you know what i want to give you just a snapshot of some of the a short snapshot of the history of why how we got connected because some people would know but some people wouldn't um but when, when my family moved to olympia washington 1995 uh and uh from california <laughs> okay right so there's there's that I'm, I'm four years old i'm you know coming into that my brother's too and um you know somewhere somehow i don't remember all the details maybe you can even remember if you do um you my my family met your family you met my dad and we had started coming to living water church in olympia where i'm currently a pastor at one of those campuses now and uh and That's crazy. you had just started this kind of this this intern program or uh called master's commission you know that you had mm -hmm. brought up really um coming from san diego right and uh and there was a young man who was a part of the program who you were trying to find a home for or a, a host home because it right. hadn't, hadn't maybe been working out um, up to that point <laughs> um, with a few of maybe the situations. And so uh, <laughs> and so you at some level approached my dad or my dad connected with you and, and you had said, hey, could you guys would you guys pray about, you know, hosting this young man? He's 18, 19 coming uh, from California and, and doing our program. And uh, and and we my parents said, yes, that man was John Kobler, a uh, little 18 year old John Kobler, who is uh, my my <laughs> my lead pastor, him and his wife fond yeah. now. Right. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, and look, I mean, the way that the Lord used that moment of connection as John lived with us for a year when I was four, five years old. Uh, yeah. because of your introduction and then I mean so much different impact. I just think it's crazy. I just think it's crazy right. that that's yeah. how that's part of how the Lord used that. That's just the start, right? Um, right. so our families have known each other for a long time, really since that 90, 90 95 year. And um I uh, have a great relationship with um uh, almost all of your kids and the th three of them I've got, you know, closer relationships. Uh, two of them, I have an even closer relationship. And one of them, I have a really close relationship between their, your boys that just been massive parts of my life, uh, especially Ooh. in the last five and uh, six years. Um, but, uh, but, but being here today uh, really is, is that all of that stuff would still have been impactful and, and merited a conversation today. But, but really why you're here with me today is because of the way you've walked with me and impacted my life over the last year and a half to two years um, in a more specific and intentional way. And uh, and so before before sharing more about that, what I'd love to just kind of open up and, and hear you, um, you know, kind of when you speak into your your world that you're living in now, when you gave your life to Jesus and had that radical moment encounter uh, back in, you said, 1985, Mm -hmm. did, did, did you did you envision around I mean being where you are now with the life that you have and you're living did, could you see that or any glimpse of that back at, you know right you know around that moment of like t turning your life over to Jesus and surrendering to Jesus um probably not to the degree that I I, I see it now of course um <clears throat> But I was, you know, I was living such a different life. My my life was a complete lie. Uh, I was addicted to all kinds of things, um, and uh, and yet I was I I was searching. You know, I was in a dark place, and sure. I was searching. And um, I, I actually I wrote a book, and I, I know you you'll you'll give people the opportunity to yep. to know how to get that, but. I wrote a book for my boys because I always wanted them to know where they came from. Yeah. And, um, uh, but when, but when I got saved, I got radically transformed. Like it was a, um, you know, uh, turn on the light switch transformation. It was just like immediate. Yeah. And, um, and so from that moment forward and the, and uh, the, the, the biggest piece of transformation was, um, me coming to the realization that I was forgiven <laughs> because I, I had hurt so many people. I had done so many horrific things to other people. And I was such an egotistic maniac. 
um, I was a bodybuilder. I was into nutrition, you know, all this stuff, but I was smoking dope, doing drugs, you know, <laughs> right. while I was doing all that. And when I came to the revelation that I was forgiven, that Jesus had forgiven me, it, it blew my mind. And from that point forward, uh, all I did was just tell people that Jesus loved them and had a plan for their life. Because I had a guy who always came into my, my business and always told me, Jesus loves you, Tim, and has a plan for your life. Yes. And so so that's what I did. Yeah. And from that moment forward, man, my uh, all I could see was the opportunity to share the gospel with people and give them a, an opportunity to receive Jesus. Yeah. And so, so yeah. I did. There's a, you know, oh, speaking of your book, hold on one second. I'm going to grab some. I've got a, I've got an OG copy right here. And um, <laughs> there it is. Just so people, can see. people that are watching the video that they're listening, you'll, you'll have to come back and watch it. But backside of hope, you got your, you got your five boys right there, you know, yep. a yep. turn face, facing a fence, you know, over looking over yeah. it. Just beautiful. But man, I, and, and that's part of, I, I can't overemphasize the value of, of people. We're not gonna be able to take the time today to unpack it. You know, all of that testimony and story, but sure. it's, it's unbelievable. And so, and so if you're, if you have any care or if I have any influence in you, in any party that's listening to this at, at all, in any way, uh, I yeah. can't, I cannot, I cannot recommend enough you getting uh, the book it's on Amazon. If you know, there's, there's probably other places you can find it, but, and we'll put all the links in the, in the show notes from, uh, from this, but because it's, because to your, to what you just said, it, it radical transformation, radical, like, like you can't deny God exists kind of transformation no and that and that's like that's the thing that you know when i look at the world we're living in now um i I think that there's almost like a there's almost a lost here's what i see and have even struggled with at times almost like there's a lost hope that that kind of transformation can still happen and and i know it's not true but it almost feels like it it is at times, right? It feels like it transformation, like the story, like you're part of your story and, and, and the way that God radically changed you and then continued it. And then how it's not, it wasn't just a hot minute. It's, yeah. it's continued to develop and be sanctified and transformed into multiplicative impact, exponential impact mm-hmm. with people that you just, sure. it feels like we don't see that kind of transformation in people's lives anymore like that. Uh, yeah. But, but I know it's not true. No, it's not true. And, and those kinds of things are happening everywhere. I think the biggest thing is that, you know, I, I think we're living in a time and, and we've, we've lived in this time for, for centuries sure. where um, man looks at himself. And I think, you know, it, it hasn't changed. It's probably just, it's just probably uh, been uh, more enhanced, you know, with technology and phones and, you know, t- all of those kinds of things. But, but at the same time, um, if we'll just open our eyes and look and see, and man, it's it, it's happening throughout the earth, yeah, and it's happening in, in supernatural ways like uh, like we've never seen. I I, I I had the privilege of being in Ukraine just just a few weeks ago and meeting with some people who literally, you know, the, every day they don't know if their their lives going to end or 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 not, and yet they're seeing uh, miracles and people's lives being transformed through the power of God. And, and some of these people have literally lost everything, yeah. have nowhere to go, nowhere to live. And yet Jesus is showing up on their doorsteps and is revealing themselves to them. And that's just one area. That's just one place, right. let alone right here in the city that we're living in, the city that you're living in. And, you know, I just think we need to open our eyes and look and see because God is doing, God is doing supernatural things in the earth yeah. right now. Yeah. So, there's a there's a there's a key thing that you said in the very beginning of you kind of just sharing a little bit of that testimony a few minutes ago that I, I'd love for you to speak into because when I think about one of the things that gets in the way of that kind of transformation happening, let's just take like the 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 United States, let's just take the American church for a moment, um, if you will. One of the things that I believe uh, inhibits that kind of transformation happening is for um is, is men and women being actually honest mm. like brutally honest with the reality of where they are and the life that they're living you because mm-hmm. you use the you use the word um like i i 
I, I lived, I was living a lie. I was living lots of lies. And it, something came into that moment where that, that transformation start of, of you letting go of that world and realizing like I had been building uh, and maintaining a, a life of lies to some degree. Um, right. I, I just, I, I continue to see that, that we we'll call it pride, uh, call it lots of different things, probably pride being a decent root of that. But like, how would you encourage somebody that's, that's listening to this right now and they're thinking to themselves, man, I'd love a taste of that kind of transformation. But I feel like it's I feel like it's so far away. I feel like what it would re- what it would take for me to say yes to that would require me to be exposed or be whatever yeah. in all of these areas of my life that I've been living in some kind of a lie and and the fear of the consequences of that or the impacts of that keeps keeps people captive from really stepping mm-hmm. into what they might need to do to to begin that transformation. And really we, obviously we both believe is centered in Jesus, but how would you encourage a challenge somebody that's like, that's what they're thinking? Yeah. I, <clears throat> so I was, I was a habitual liar, which basically just means that I didn't know the difference between uh, a lie and the truth. And it, it was so severe that um, I I had believed so much. Matter of fact, the book that you're holding or that you held up um, went through four iterations, largely because as we interviewed and as we went through the process of, of, telling the story of my life, um, I realized that there were so many things that I had believed were true that weren't even true. Yeah. And this was, this was 20, 25 years later in my yeah. life. Yeah. And so, but, but here's something that happened to me when I, when I first got saved and, and if there are people listening to this, people that are really struggling with lying, one of the key ingredients to overcoming lying is to tell on yourself. Yeah. And so uh, I, I was in a, I was in a point, I, I, I owned nutrition centers years ago and this is what I was doing when I came to Jesus and I'm sitting there and I'm in an appointment and I'm doing a presentation, sharing my, my message, my, my, my gospel of, of nutrition and how it's going to make them feel better. And, and I, I came to the conclusion and I looked at this lady and I said, ma'am, I said, everything I just told you about me is a lie. This program actually really works. But everything I said isn't true about myself. And I said, I am so sorry. And she just got up and walked out. Wow. And, 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 you know, when you do that enough times, you begin to really taste what it means to be truthful. And I think that's probably one of the greatest ingredients in overcoming and telling, telling on yourself, because nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do that for you. They can expose you because you lied and you didn't tell the truth. But nobody can do that for you. If you yeah. choose to do it, I guarantee you, you will begin to overcome lying and, and facing the truth about who you really are. Yeah. One of the other things I did, and I'll just, I'll leave it at, at this, but one of the other things I did is I went, I, I had violated a ton of women and meaning violated, I just, I, I just, when I came to the realization of what I had done to them, I realized that, that it, it was so wrong. Yeah. So I went to every woman that I could physically and, and went to their doors. I called them on the phones and I asked them to forgive me. They thought I was insane. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to make what, what was wrong, right. Yeah. And, and tell them why, you right. know, that because Jesus could forgive me, I could ask for forgiveness. And so, uh, I, those two things, tell, telling, telling, telling on yourself, telling yeah. the truth on yourself and, and exposing the things that you've done to other people, uh, especially those that you've hurt, that that you can do, th- that you have the 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 power to do that, uh, yeah. is it, it transformed my life. Yeah. It really did. So good. and it se- it cemented. You know, it it did something. It solidified the work of what Jesus was doing inside of me. That was so radical. Right. Okay. Before we move on from this, I think I think this is something that a lot of people. Um, don't hear a lot talked about, and they probably wrestle with more than than they would even acknowledge. So, there, you know, when you think about people that you would need to tell on yourself to, I think that uh, a lot of the time it can be it can feel easier to tell on yourself to the people that there's not a lot of relational um, 
there's not a lot of relational whatever at risk. Does that make sense? So like a good sure. example, the good example you just made of that first woman that came in was you were trying to sell a product to whatever, right? Still a really powerful moment but for you in that sense. But like, you know, you're that this is a woman that you may never see again. It doesn't necessarily matter. You maybe met her in that moment versus um, like uh, a spouse versus mm-hmm. a, 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 a friend, a close friend or a pastor or whatever else. Like when you think about that, when you think about the person that's like, yeah, I can get around telling on myself with people where there's not maybe as much at risk versus the people that I'm like, I've been living with for 15, 20 years in a, in a marriage. How, how would you, how would you, how would you encourage them in that space or, or give them, yeah. you know, some, some kind of wisdom? Well, um, Dana and I have Dana and I have a um, a value in our marriage, and that is that um, it, it it's just no secrets. So w- we keep no secrets, and as far as I know, at this moment, there are no secrets between us. We, yeah. We're not hiding anything, and and I think you know the moment that you hide is the moment that you that that you um, begin to block the ability to go to a greater level level of intimacy with your with your spouse. Yeah. And um you know to think that you're hiding something and that you're keeping something from them um and and that they're not going to you know they're not going to find that out. The question that I always pose when I'm having conversations with people that ask these types of questions is who is it that you would want to tell them? Is it you or somebody else? That's a great question. Great and, and, question. and if you have the opportunity um, to tell the truth on yourself to the person that you that you ultimately that you love probably more than anybody else on the planet, right? Um, I would just say, take the opportunity now. Notwithstanding the pain that 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 can cause, um, you know, there's there's great great recommendations and encouragement for us to um, gather other people around us to, you know, to get people that would walk with us through these kinds of difficult situations, because it could be a variance of all kinds of things that you would need to expose yourself or, or share. Yeah. But, but the longer that we stay there, uh, the more damage it will do. And it won't just do the damage to, to our, our marriages. It'll damage our kids. It'll damage our grandkids because it passes from generation to generation. Yeah. And and we have the ability because simply because of what Christ has done for us. Yeah. We have the ability to literally vanquish those things yeah. from from our relationships. Yeah. And and remember, it's two ways. Right. Right. There totally. has to be there has to be response too. Right. But but you're not responsible for for the other person's response. You're responsible for yours. Right. You can't dictate how they're going to respond to your you know, your truth telling. But I really, truly believe that Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will then set you free. Yeah. And that's not, I'm not misquoting scripture. I'm just saying there is true freedom in knowing truth. Yes. And when we are truthful with ourselves, true freedom can come. Yeah. Yeah. So good. One of the things, uh, what I think I like to do in in these kind of conversations with the, this 52 Project uh, having these moments of people who've made, made an impact on my life is how like a segment where there are just like some things almost like I want to like, um, uh, popcorn, I don't know, it's not the word, but like, yeah. it's like a rapid fire. And there's some things that like, when I, when, when I think about how you've made an impact on me, but also the people continually in your world there, they stand out. They'll be the things that like, that come to the people's tops of minds and hearts that, uh, I just think are so cool. And I, and so it's a, it's an, it's a moment to just to encourage you, honor you in that way, but, but, uh, but just kind of sit back for a moment and, and receive it, if you will, uh, you know, knowing that you, you don't necessarily like, or love that kind of stuff, but I, I want to just communicate it because I think it's cool and uh, impactful for, uh, the me, me and the ones that are going to be listening to this conversation that do know you or have had an encounter with you can, can resonate mm-hmm. with it. Um, so here we go. Here's a here's a few of the rapid fire. One of them is that that marks your life is that you are an encourager. Mm. That there there I don't know another person in my life that I've met or know of that has that word like seared onto who they are like you. 
and mm. it's small ways. It's the uh, it's the birthday messages on Facebook, you know, and, and I remember there being a time when I first started kind of knowing you a little bit more five, six years ago, kind of reengaging our relationship. And uh, at that time, I think you were, you might've still been in Cambodia. I'm, I'm not totally sure um, as uh, doing mission missions work up there, but you would every somehow with, with their mutual friends on Facebook and I'd see them and their birthdays or whatever you comment, happy birthday, you know, and, and what young man, young lady, if it was somebody my age or younger or whatever, <laughs> um, you know, much love from Cambodia, much love from, uh, you know, Romania. Right. And, and there was just this at, at the time I was like, how, you know, when I didn't know you as well, I was like, this dude is just, you know, kind of got, um, I don't know better phrase to say it, but like he, he just, it's like a, it's canned. It's like a, he just, this is, you know, he just, it's just, but then I begin to realize, oh no, no, this is actually this dude's intentionality with that person in the relationship to make them feel mm -hmm. seen and encouraged because the mm -hmm. way, the, the way that I watched you interact with people in real life when you, when you came back and came home to the States or whatever else, or with me was like, Oh no, this isn't just a, this isn't just a persona of encouragement. This is this guy's actual heart and intention and consistency. And so every time I see one of those now on Facebook or just a comment, you leave sometimes just one word comments, right? Nobody does that, but you do. And it's like, mm. it's like impactful. Nobody, you know, it's like, you know, beautiful or like, love you know whatever and and this is the story i had to remember i had to recall because i was laughing so hard i had i text wes and I, I don't know if i've ever told you or maybe i did at some point uh because i was with work, working with wes your youngest son and doing ministry together for a few years a couple years ago and uh and there was a moment on facebook i'll never forget it some dude like you either posted something or somebody else did and you know you had commented and this dude kind of just trolled commented back in some kind of you know <laughs> critique or something like that and uh the way you responded i don't know i think that you responded you just said like awesome or beautiful or something like that. <laughs> and i told you i screenshot said to west and i was like dude even the trolls get encouraged <laughs> by tim wimberly but man i you know what i just think the world is 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 got a void of encouragement and mm. um and i love how you have you leaned in that way and so many people have felt that and and i'm thankful mm. for it i've been a, i've been a recipient of that i have a personal story more so with you and i in a moment i'll share but so boom encouragement um the other big one that you know stands out to me and a lot of people uh is is within your marriage and your your family your parenting your kids um i have people i talk to you and you know this as well based on the way you've counseled people and have uh, been in ministry, but it it's rare what you guys have, um, and it's it is God it is God's grace it is God's blessing and gift absolutely, but it but it's also not on accident. Um, the intentionality that you and Dana have had over the years in your marriage and w with your kids and continuing with your kids and grandkids um, is rare, and and so to have five full grown boys men who uh, have families of their own that they are in, leading and loving and uh, pursuing Jesus with each other and their families. And and this is the key here. I think it's just crazy. And they all still love you guys. Mm. And yeah. I've been around some of the moments in recent years where, where you're hanging out with all of them together and I get to, I get to just be a part of it somehow for a, a birthday celebration or a Thanksgiving, whatever. And I watch these moments in real life time your, your, your boys don't just tolerate you and are, are, are just there to try to appease the, the parental obligation, you know, to hang out. They, they love being with you. They love, mm. they love making the sacrifice or whatever it is coming across States to figure out how to be together. And, mm. and, and, and it's special, man. And then the watching how you in those times lean in and engage them. I mean, whole, I see some moments you've grabbed some of their faces and just look them in the eyes and just, communicate love to them and speaking life over them, encouraging them. Um, it's special, man. And people, people mm -hmm. that know you guys and have seen it are going, how, H how is this, how this is so such an anomaly. Um, and, and I know there's a lot of things you could say as to how that is where it's at now and worth acknowledging that obviously you guys made mistakes along the way, not a perfect marriage. Lots. 
not a per not a not a perfect uh parental history all that right um but the the fruit is evident man like you got a you got a family of of millennial you know young men down to you know gen z uh and they love jesus and they love their their spouses and they love their kids uh those that have kids and and they love you guys how 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 <laughs> that's the question i want to ask yeah uh that's that's a broad question totally um probably the greatest thing i could say if i could say one thing i would say the greatest thing i that that we gave our kids was our marriage and not perfect by any means but we were who we said we were yeah inside our home and outside of our home and we never changed and we uh i love my wife i mean i have no idea how i got her <laughs> but i'll take her <laughs> <laughs> and she what she did and how she loved and how she ministered to our sons uh to this day um, she is a treasure and even uh you know just our ongoing relationship and our pursuit of growing together um i mean you know we we go to counseling we go to ministry opportunities for us because we want to model and live our lives in a way first of all that we would end well yeah and second that um you know, so many people are, are watching and you have no idea, yeah. right? You just have no idea. But, um, man, I love, <laughs> I love my kids, man. I mean, they're, they're my kids. They will always be my kids, but they are some of my most favorite human beings on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. And I admire them. They, they teach me, they grow me. Um, I want to be a better father, husband because of them. Um, but, um, you know, we and and we'll probably do some more of this Q&A because there's a lot of things that I would love to share. But if, if yeah. I was to say one thing to you in That's this good. moment, it really is my marriage is the greatest thing that we gave our kids because it was real and it was authentic and it was true. And they saw who we really were and. They watched us love each other and they watched us struggle and they watched us, you know, uh, go through things. But that's, yeah. that's what I would say to you. Yeah, no, that's so, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And, and uh, I would affirm it from just being a, a person that's getting to gotten to have a, a, a witness of that to, to a degree as well. Um, and yeah. and yeah, you just mentioned that there were, because of, you know, we, I had some people text me and be like, Hey, are you guys going to have like a three to four hour episode? Cause there's no way you guys are going to be able to just be. <laughs> and I was like, no, me, listen, I'm going to do a, 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 I'm going to see if he'll do a bonus kind of a Q and a. So we're going to, we are. Yeah. So after this episode's over, we will have a bonus episode of Q and a. Come so on. Yeah, let's if, do it. If, but if you're, let me say, yeah, let me yeah. share yeah. one thing. I just want to share this one story real, yeah. real quick. One of my sons, because they're all so unique and so special, and they've all just had such an impact in so many ways. One of my sons, we were doing a parenting seminar, actually, at a, uh, a, a fairly, fairly decent-sized church. And the night before the parenting seminar, they brought their whole staff and elders and their spouses. And uh, one of our sons got to be there for, for this, this time. And they just started asking us questions. They just wanted to ask questions. You know, what is it like being married and being in ministry? And somebody asked us, when your kids were young, what did you, what did you, how did you keep your marriage alive and fresh? You know, and we told them we, we would purposely get away. Sometimes it was for a, a, an evening. Sometimes it was for overnight. Um, sometimes it was for a weekend. Yeah. And somebody asked our son who was in the, in the meeting time, right? Right. Because you can talk about fruit all day long, but when the fruit's there and you can ask it, you know, yeah, you can ask questions right, of the totally, fruit. Totally. And, and so they asked our son, so how did that make you feel when your parents left you for a weekend? And, you know, I, I had no idea what he was going to say. And he just said, I hated it. <laughs> he said, I wanted to go with them and they would just leave us. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh, crap, here we go, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there was this like long silence. And tears welled up in his eyes. Mm. And he says, but today, that right there 
is one of the greatest gifts I possess. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, I could say that all day long, yeah. but for, for your child to say that about you. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this just this question, this thought just kind of hit me. And since we're right here in it, I mean, let me ask this because, I'll, although what I just, what I the picture I just painted in the in the what most people have seen and uh, witnessed from you guys that seems so rare is this you know this family that continues to be together, in the way that it is. Um, there there are a lot of parents out there, and some that I will even listen to this and watch this, that have older kids, older older children, adult children. Or, or they're in that stage where their their children are about to become adult children, and when they take a step back and they look at the reality of where their relationships are, they are uh, they're not where they want them to be. They're disappointed. They're hurt. They're, um, you know, I know I have conversations with parents that are like, I mean, we we raise them different and better than this, or whatever else, and and now I'm in this tension of feeling like if I were to hold my values solid still, that it's gonna uh, create a wedge with my child because they don't believe or see the same things. And now I'm in this tension. Do I compromise in my values or my, 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 my morals in this space of faith or whatever else so I can maintain some relationship or vice versa. And, and some, so some are just disappointed. Some it's, it's out of their control. Uh, all of those factors are involved here, but, but the person that I want you to speak to for a moment is that mom or dad that is, um, is, trying to figure out what they can do now given the reality of maybe some decisions they wish they could change in the way that maybe they whatever raised in different ways and maybe not sure. but the value yeah. the desire in there to be like i want more than i've got with my adult children and their families in the future um but maybe there's something in the way there how would you challenge or encourage a parent in that space mm -hmm. To, yeah. to to not give up in that or to take a step in that direction? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to just say I would never, ever want to assume that I know how you feel speaking to a parent who's listening or watching. Yeah. Um, because I don't know your situation. Um, but, but what I would say, number one, is don't quit. Don't ever give up on your relationship with your kids. The second thing is, is um, if there are things that you've done that you haven't taken responsibility for in, in hurting your child or, you know, even even your older child, your you know young adult um, and haven't accepted responsibility, haven't taken ownership of those things. I would just encourage regardless of the response, you take responsibility for what you can do because you can't. You can't try to force them. You can. You can force them to do, I guess, as much as you could try, sure. but you really can't. I mean, right. I can tell my kid to go clean their room, right. but ultimately they're going to choose to do that. Right. And either they're going to be rewarded or there's going to be consequences. Right. But still, they are going to choose. And so you can't do anything about their response, but you can do everything about yours. So take responsibility for what is yours. And, and make that right. And then listen to these words. Love covers a multitude of wrong. Yeah. And just like Jesus has covered your sin, your love for your kids can cover theirs. And and again, I don't know your situation. I don't know the, the, the degree of um, angst or difficulty that you're walking through. But what I do know is, is that love covers and, and if you can find ways, even creative ways, to love your kids in the midst of what you're walking through, um, they're like seeds planted. And, yeah. and what, so often what we do is we try to love them and they don't respond the way we want them to or way they, the way we think they should. And so we stop. Can I just tell you, don't stop. Don't quit. You keep loving. You 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 find new ways to love. You find new ways to care for them. I remember when my kids went off to college and and they were out of my, you know, reach and touch. Yeah. I would just send verses and I would send quotes and I would send text messages that just said, I love you. I'm thinking about you right now. You know, just you just look for creative means and creative ways. And 
Um, and I'm sure you're already doing that in creative ways, but I would just encourage you, don't give up. Don't stop. Don't quit. You keep loving them in ways that you never thought you could. And last, seek help um, because we can't do this alone. We need people in our kids' lives. We need people in our lives to help us with our kids. Yeah. And um, yeah, I could talk about that for yeah. a long time. So no, I'll, I'll leave that there. So good. So the, uh, the that little kind of rapid fire moment I was talking about between yeah, the things, yeah. right? En encouragement, the the way that you're, you know, your marriage and your parenting has marked you guys. People see it. Um, this is going to be kind of like a segue one. So I'm like the last little rapid fire and acknowledgement, but then into how it's impacted me. And again, part of why right now in this season, uh, this conversation is happening for, for this, this podcast. Um, and it is the way that you've been a, a father, a, a spiritual mm -hmm. father to so many people. Um, I keep meeting people that were like, I, I mean, we're, we're leading a church now, uh, part of the living water family in, in, in Lacey, Washington. And, you know, there's people that, you know, we've, We've brand new people that are moving here or been here in the area new, but have no connection in history here or from those that have right for years and years and have had some moments with you. And I was just talking to somebody the other day who was telling me about how uh, they met their wife and, you know, all of this different stuff. And she had done it part of the intern program uh, kind of that you guys had uh, started and launched and led for so many years. And uh, and he he had said that in that moment, the way that you leaned in for her. Um, being a spiritual father, you know, she, she had a, has a, had a, a father, you know, has a father, but, and he was a, a good guy, but he wasn't the, the dad that, you know, he was supposed to be. And, uh, and so did this intern program and he, he began to want to start dating her, pursuing her. And uh, he just started to talk about how he had to have some conversations or you, or he got some conversations had with him. And one of them in particular, <laughs> what was, was you and just the, the, the fatherly, like, Hey, you know, you, you better take care of you better take care you better you better become a man of god you know to be the the, the one that's worthy of of uh, of this young lady's life um all the way through you you know counseled them pre you know through their their premarital stuff or whatever and, and then ultimately they, they went to southern california and, and got married and and you guys showed up and 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 did that and were a part of that and i just was like i you know i knew this guy but i know that story mm. and there's been so many of those that you just have been that you've stepped in as a spiritual father for mm. years and and it's 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 incredible, and I think it's also like how encouragement. I feel like there's this massive void of that right now in the world, that, and we need probably more than people realize. You've been feeling that for a long time, and still do. There's this fatherlessness that is still a massive void in the world and within the church, especially too, uh, that you've been feeling uh, as well. And and although I have had had an incredible biological uh, dad, and Absolutely. have an amazing relationship with him, and. Um, and he's, he's been the the largest figure in my life. Uh, him and my mom, I count as a great, as an incredible gift. I had a great conversation with him a couple episodes ago. Um, Super. That, uh, but, but what I've recognized too, is even in those blessings of having that, like to your point, uh, your kids still need other people in your life to speak into Absolutely. you and to encourage you. And you've been one of those voices in this last year and a half that has been, uh, monumental in um, why I'm still healthily here. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned this a few times already on this podcast this season, but, but 2022 man was, was, was the most difficult year of my life personally. And uh, for a multiple, uh, for multiple reasons. And, and it was still a great year, but it was the hardest year I've ever had in my life personally. And um, you pursued me. Um, you have for for the last several years, but you pursued me and made yourself available. And 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 really, what ended up happening was, um, I, I really started more intentionally, kind of doing a, um, a, a life coaching with you. You know, you are uh, is that what you call? Would you call where your kind of your your coaching world is? Is it is it in under the umbrella of life coaching? Would you call it that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Co coaching, you know, because you are you mm -hmm. guys you, you do coaching, you know, and so yeah. started doing that more regularly with you and um and you just begin to speak into things that I hadn't had people speak into you begin to help shape some of those things and ask the right questions that uh, I just didn't have people asking and um and it wasn't just in one category it was a holistic you know for my marriage for my parenting for my pastoring for my leading for me and um and I I can there's just for so many moments throughout the year that I had I had 
just challenging days, weeks or months. And I would know I was going to have a, a coaching call with you or a, a time to check in with you. And every single time I got into that space, as discouraged as I was, and there were times I wanted to cancel or delay or not schedule it <laughs> um, because I was just afraid of not being um, positive enough to reciprocate the positivity mm -hmm. I always felt or the encouragement that always came from me. But dude, every single time I got in there and was able to be myself and, and you, um, you fathered me in, a, in another way that was just what the Lord knew I needed. And I'll, this was the, this is the story I want to kind of end on for this moment. Cause I have one more question for you uh, to finish the episode. Um, unless you got something else that, you know, you wanted to speak to, but here's the moment. Uh, this was a few weeks ago, uh, 2023 now. Um, and it might've been right before we, we, uh, it might have been early, early 2023. So, so January 2023. You were, you were home. Were you home? You were home in January 23, 2023. And, uh, you know, you've periodically texted me, encouraged me, um, you know, engaged with our ministry from afar, watch, watching our services online, you know, periodically or whatever. Um, but you showed up, you showed up, you showed up in person uh, in January. And, uh, um, service service started and uh you know just still still kind of wrestling through some things and you know i was just actually discouraged a little bit that morning but i feel like i just had a word in my heart that god was god wanted to bring out and, and uh and you showed up um like right in the beginning and and then we have this moment every service is called a connection break it's kind of the you know after <laughs> the the announcements but before the message gives people a chance to kind of just get and you came up and you, i was on the platform getting ready to preach you came up and you know grab me and and just in my mind what was happening was you know it, it meant a lot that you were already there um and just coming you saying hi showing showing up mm. you did, that's it you mean you showed up um and so what i was expecting what was that what i was expecting was that you were just gonna leave because you, you did the you did you did enough you did more than enough already you just showed up you know but you got other things you got other kids in the area to see family, limited time, people to be impacting, whatever. And so I thought it was just kind of like a quick drive by. Hey, I'm just coming for a moment, you know. Um, but then you sat down in the back. You sat down in the back and you stayed through my whole message. And and I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, man, but I felt like it was this impartation of the father showing me a picture, which was was this at times I feel like God kind of just sometimes does a drive by. Hey, hey, you're mm -hmm. doing a good job. I see you. Um, <laughs> but then he, he's got, he's got bigger or better things to do. You know, he's come, he's got other people to help or impact it. And he kind of just, he just, he leaves. And I know that's not true. It's how I felt feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then when you, when you stayed and you sat in the back of the sanctuary and you stayed through my whole message um, and I, and I just recognize it in moments, you know, and I'm not preaching for you. I'm not preaching for your approval or to make no. you proud or right? any of that. I'm preaching for the father and for the people, right. To be impacted with the, with the gospel message. But throughout the message, the Lord showed me, he was in the back and was like, I'm still here and I still see you. And you're, still doing, <laughs> you're still, you're still doing a great job. That's good. And, um, and you stayed till the end until the end of the message and, and, you know, service was wrapping up and then, and then you walked away and, and, and ironically, um, the, the message that day, the sermon all had all these audio technical video difficulties. And so it was, it's our first message since we opened in September, 2021, that net, that didn't get recorded in any capacity, nothing got <laughs> saved. And, um, and I felt like I preached my guts out. I felt like I preached one of the, one of the better messages I've, I've preached. And so my, at first I was like, man, I'm bummed. There's people I'd love to hear this that weren't here. And then mm. as soon as I had that thought, I said, but you know what? But Tim was here <laughs> and I, I could care. Honestly, him being to getting to be in that room and getting to be with me in that moment. Um, I don't care if nobody else gets to hear or see or I'm going to have it recorded or blah, 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 whatever else that meant more to me, you being there and staying when you very easily could have left, um, in the way that the Lord used it. And so I haven't told you that yet. I didn't have that moment no. with you yet, but I wanted to share it because uh, it's, that. it really is kind of a culmination to a degree of what this last year, year and a half has been on a journey of how you've impacted my life. Because um, mm. if I were to boil it down and someone would say like, well, how has he done it? That was the picture um, mm. that I could the best describe it. So 
thank you for that. Uh, thank you for sharing that. that was yeah, a, that was a real, real gift. Um, this is the the question that I I want to wrap up with, uh, and I I ask it pretty much. Oh man, I've got snot and you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had somebody say too when I told them we were doing this. They said, "Well, get get ready for the tears and tissues." And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> we'll see." <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, really wanting to to help people get freed up from the things holding them back, so they can, yeah, you know, get built up into who they were made to be. Um, Tim Wimberly, twenty twenty three. When you think about your life right now or in this recent season. What is something that you would say um, has held you back or you've felt held back by that you've experienced uh, freedom from or you're learning in this season and you've overcome it? So something that's been holding you back that you've overcome or something that you are overcoming that is more in this season of your life. You know, kids are growing out of the house. You got grandkids, you know, but you're still doing ministry and investing in people uh yeah. married married 37 years all of that so what would you say has held you you feel like has held you back and but you have overcome or are overcoming right now yeah i think um there's a lot of things uh not a lot of things that i'm having to overcome i, I mean there's things i overcome every day sure but i think probably the thing that has um i, I would say in my early christian life tormented me but even to this day is the thing that rises to the surface every time is that um, I'll never be enough. Uh, I, I mean, my, my at one point, uh, the people in my life when, before I became a Christian in 1985 um, basically believed either I would end up in prison or I would, I would, you know, take my life or I would be dead. And, <clears throat> and that thing has, has traveled and tried to take me out for for a whole bunch of years and and i would say that um you know when i was talking earlier about not quitting not giving up th this is this is the thing about the christian life we think that when jesus saves us everything's going to be okay yeah. and here's the thing it is going to be okay because jesus said listen in this life you're going to have tribulation and trials but be of good cheer because i have overcome the world yeah and and what i would say is 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 that if you're struggling with things that seem like they're the same things, welcome. <laughs> yes. Because I don't think it's that we, and I believe in deliverance. I, I, I have been delivered. I have been set free. And I feel that I am free. But don't think because you struggle with the same thing on a consistent basis that you're not. Yeah. And that Jesus isn't there. Because he is. And I would say... <clears throat> that it, it is the thing that comes after me the most. The thing that I'm doing is I'm getting tools and putting them in my tool belt and I'm getting better and quicker at saying, hey, get the hell out of here. That's right, let's go. <laughs> and it's, it's not that it doesn't keep, it doesn't try to attempt itself into my life, but yeah. the thing that I'm learning, learning, that's an active word, learning, yes. Yes. is that I have the tools and the abilities because of Jesus to overcome all of these things that try to, to prevent me or hold me back. Because the enemy doesn't want us to win, you guys. Yeah, He doesn't. And so he's going to try to get us to believe lies and think so much less of ourselves right. so that, we, that, that we'll just quit. We'll give up. My word to you is don't quit. You keep going. You keep pressing in and keep learning new things and new tools that are, all, that are already there. But, but just dig them out of that, that thing called the Bible and allow those things to be transformational to your life. Yeah. And just watch, watch what he'll do. Yeah. 30, 37 years. <laughs> this, this August will be 38 years. I've been digging in that thing and it's been changing my life. So Amen. good. Amen. So good. Well, man, I, I, uh, I know I speak for a lot of people I, on behalf of a lot of people when I just say, thank you. Thanks for being, uh, thanks for being you. Yeah. Authentically you and uh yeah. and for and for continuing to love jesus and not giving up because that has uh that's impacting a lot more people than than you even can ever imagine and so um love you a lot love your family a lot what a privilege it is to get to be a part of your your kids lives and yes. i count myself an absolute yeah. privileged joy to get to be in them uh you know just be, wes wes and justin on both ends of the yeah. spectrum justin being oldest <laughs> and wes being 
are, are two uh, two of my some of my closest friends in in, in the season that I so love good. giving my life for. And um, here's how you know. Just want to make sure people know we talked about this right. Backs out of hope. Yep. That book. Uh, getting it on on Amazon. People, I'm gonna put yep. the link here in the uh, in the description. Um, you guys have a website as well that people can kind of yep. find you and, and find all of the information from like, you know, the, the ministry work you guys do, the mission stuff to yep. even like coaching, you know, cause you, you offer coaching, uh, and, and, and do that, you know, as well. And, and that's something that if people are listening to this and they're like, man, that could be something I'm interested in all of that. They can go to a website and, and will you just yeah, share it on the audio side. So if people can't click the link or whatever. Yeah. They- yeah to the life dot, uh, to the nations dot life to, to the, nations. the nations, one word dot life. Yeah. And you can contact us there. You can email us. You can privately. Um, there's there's a link there to to get involved. And so, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so good. Well, yeah. I, I love you. And uh, I love you for bro. taking the time uh, today to be a part of this. And uh, we'll have a, a special bonus Q&A episode with some questions as well. So if you feel like, man, I wanted more, you can get more uh, as well <laughs> as as well as get that book. I'm telling you people the backside of hope. And and I'm going to just I'm, pu- I'm putting it in now. You know, I don't want to like make any spoilers, but I know there's going to be another book or two one day or more. And <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like that that profile picture that you had up there. And I, you know, I, I'm telling you, I think the title has got to be the 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 front side of legacy i'm telling you it's, i just i feel like you got it i just perfect That's way good. to and so I'm, i want the i want the, the the public credit for that title if it comes out i'm just putting it out there now no okay. man thank thankful for you uh love you and your you family too, and uh we're so uh so great to have you on the episode today love you love you with that thanks for joining us until next time see you later <laughs>